Hey guys, so you can of course see what we're gonna do. It's a little fun animation with metaballs. And let's go into Blender and I'm gonna delete the main cube and I'm gonna show you a little bit of uh, metaballs. So here we have a metaball. You just click on Shift A and can add one. And you can see this line around the metaball, right? If you add a new metaball, so I just click on Shift D to duplicate that other one. You can see that I can move it around. And when they go inside each other, so when they're close enough to each other, you can see that they kind of morph together, right? And this is the power of metaballs. And that is also how we're going to create this fun animation. So, yeah, you don't only have like balls, you have capsules, uh, planes, ellipsoids, uh, blah, blah, blah. You have all that stuff. And... Yeah, that's all great and dandy, but we are just gonna use a sphere right now. And what we want to do is we want of the smaller spheres to kind of, you know, pop out of here. And you can already see that if I use a smaller sphere, it just doesn't even look like a sphere anymore. If you go into this uh, object data properties, this um, has to do with the metaballs in this case, you can put this resolution lower. And the lower it is, the more uh, like better it looks. Make sure your render is also lower. Just be careful that because if you put it very low, it can uh, you know have some strain on your PC. So let's delete this ball for right now. And what I want to do is I want these smaller balls to pop out, right? So I'm just gonna duplicate the ball and scale it down, and it's inside here. And what I want to do with this um, M ball one. I want to use a particle system to emit these metaballs. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a mesh. This is going to be a UV sphere. And this UV sphere is going to be a little bit smaller. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually emit those M balls 1, which we made smaller, from this sphere. So I am hit the bigger ball and I'm going to select our main sphere. And I'm going to add a particle system. So go in here, click on the plus, and we have a particle system. We're going to emit particles. And as you can see, we just have these particles falling down. Right now, these are rendered as halos. So if you go into render, you can see rendered as halo. We actually want an object, and we want our M ball, right? So instance object is going to be M ball 001, because that is the smaller M ball. And if we play it now, nothing will happen. This is because our first M ball has to be also active. And here we can see that something is happening. It's very, very small. And this has to do with the scale. Look at the render. Underneath the object, we have a scale. So if we put this higher, we can actually have a, a better scale that is suited for our animation. So um, you can put the scale up and you can even do some randomness in there, which is also very cool. And if we play it now, you can see that we have a very nice yeah, animation going on. This is not really the way that we wanted it. And first of all, I want way less, um, like the amount way less. So let's do 100 of these balls. And I don't want them to fall down. So if we go here into our field weights, we can change this gravity. So we just put all the way to zero and this will make sure it doesn't fall down. So now that we'll get just emitted into, you know, the air. And they go too far, as we can see. You can change this in multiple ways. First of all, I think they're going too far, but I also think they will go too fast. So what I want to do is, the f I'm going here into the velocity and put this velocity normal a little bit lower. What this does, it just, um, yeah, the velocity is like the speed at which it gets... Um, like thrown out, it's get emitted. So if I put this at five, it will go way faster. Let's look. See? And this is why we put it lower, like 0 0.1. 0 0.1. And then if we play it, you can see that it goes very slowly. Maybe even too slow, maybe 0.15 is more of what we are looking for. Yeah. And if you like it, you can still change the amount of your, uh, like how many you emit. I think in my other one I did like 50. So I'm also going to do it here. 
and the lifetime you can essentially put a bit higher. So what that does is you can see that they die off, right? So um, here it's alive and then they just pop out of existence. They essentially at that point they die. So if you put this lifetime up, let's say at 80 or 70, you can see that they will stay longer alive. And now this one will pop, pop, pop. See, so they're just staying a little bit longer alive, which can be good uh, or bad depending on what you want. Uh, maybe I'm going to put it at 70. And um, you can also do a randomness there. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that, but that's, of course, also an option. So this already looks very, very nice. And what we want to do is we want to give this some yeah, some cool materials, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to move this up. Grab another one here and uh, get a shader editor. Now I'm going to select our meta ball, like a big one, and click on new material. And here we're going to give it materials. So I also want to be in um, cycles. It also works in Eevee, by the way, but... Um, yeah, I also want some glass material and that just doesn't work as good in EV as it does in cycles. I'm going to put my device uh, to GPU because uh, mine is just faster. And in performance, I'm going to put these tiles to 256 to 256 because that works better with the GPU. If you work with a GPU, go higher tile size. If you work with a CPU, go lower. And yeah, that's all great. So let's say we want to give this some materials. If we go here into our viewport shading, like the material section, we can see that we can already change our color to whatever we want. Very, very cool. But how do we get a different material on this sphere than on these other little small spheres, right? And we need to create a sort of a mask. So let's say I have another color in here. I'm just going to use a diffuse shader with a mix shader in between these two you can see that they just get mixed at this point. So at, if we put this uh, effect at 1, we will have it all the way white, which is this diffuse. I can also put it yellow to make it like a little bit more sense. And if I put it all the way at 0, it's going to be uh, this blue color. And 0.5, they will be mixed together as they should be. So how do we create that these are different materials? It's um, not too hard. We need a color ramp. And I'm going to put this color ramp, uh, the color into the fact of this mix shader. And with this color ramp, we can change. It kind of works the same as uh, this fact, but we can change it a little bit more uh, precisely because we can put both these values uh, together to where we want. Now, I also want to use a gradient texture. And this color goes into the fact. And instead of a linear, you can already see what it does, right? It, um, it uses our color ramp. But I don't want to do it linear. I want to do a spherical. And yeah, it doesn't really put a sphere like where we want it, right? It doesn't really do the spherical way that we want it. So the way to fix this is do a texture coordinate we put in here. And we're going to put the object into the vector. And... Yeah, this makes it all the way blue and I was kind of like messing around with this and a way around this is actually get a empty in here, plane axis and scale a bit up and now we can see that if you go into the texture coordinate, we can actually select this empty and I am not 100% sure why, but this fixes our problem. So now if we put these together. You have to find the right spot, by the way. Um, but you can see that you can f match these ones together and you get this great result. So make sure you put them quite close to each other so it's uh, like nice and sharp. Otherwise, you get otherwise it's gonna be way too smooth. And I'm going to use this value. So. You can see that we have two different colors, but actually those are not only colors, but these are two different uh, like shaders we put together. So let's say instead of a diffuse, I want a glass shader in here. Glass. I can put a glass shader because this is just a, like this is our mask, let's say. So um, I think for this one, 
I just did a nice and plastic, like a black plastic. So metallic is gonna be at zero. It's gonna be uh, a darker blue, like or just a black color. And instead of this normal roughness that we have here, I'm going to use a image texture with another roughness. You can get all the textures for free. This is my website. And you go down here, create fun animations with Blender, um, and then enroll in course for free. You only have to put like your email address, blah, blah, blah. Then you'll end up in this section. And the only thing you have to do is search for the animation that you're gonna make. And then just scroll down and you can download the like the HRIs and all that stuff down here. And this texture you can just get it for free on the link below, so uh, don't worry about that. And now we go into the plastic gray, and it's gonna be plastic gray roughness. I personally do not really like the way this looks, so we have to see it in our viewport shading. And our viewport shading already doesn't have enough light. So I'm also going here into the world and add an environment texture. So this environment texture, we can open, um, I'm going to open HDRI, and this is going to be our Kaylee interior. This one also you can get for free on the link down below. Here it is. So now we can mess a little bit around with this roughness value that we have. And I personally like, the way I like to do that is get a color ramp in between here and move the color ramp just as we did here, right? So um, just move these a little bit around. And it doesn't really show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a texture coordinate node and an, a mapping node. I'm going to do the object into the factor and the mapping node here into the factor. And now you can see that it finally shows some of our details that we want. So I'm going to put this a bit here, this a bit here. I just want some randomness, like some random scratches on there. That's kind of it. So um, yeah, I think this is good. And for the other material, we actually want... Like, it's going to be very easy. We already have this glass. So this is essentially just going to be a little bit more rough, 0.4. And I'm um, put this, this uh, IOR to 0.1 or 1.03. And why do I do this? Uh, that is because the next step, I want to put an emission in here. I'm going to add another UV sphere. So shift a UV sphere. And this is going to be, let's put it a bit up. And we're going to give this a material. And this is just, uh, let's delete this principal shader. This is going to be an emission. Okay, so emission goes in here and you can give it a nice, whatever color you want. I like this color, like around here. And what you can see now is we have this nice emission from these uh, bobs, blobs, bubbles, whatever they are, right? And that is why I put this IOR so low, because if you put it higher, for some reason they all fill up and it looks like it's just this light bubble instead of really being glass on top um yeah and if you put it lower it looks like a more of like a glass layer on top by the way you can you can play around with this however you want of course but yeah so that is essential our shading uh what you also can do is i have this background in here as you can see and it's super super simple also the material is actually very very simple we use the same plastic gray and uh, well let's just very fast uh, quickly show you i first put my camera into the good spot so let's say um, if you go into view you can lock camera to view and you can just move it to whatever you want so let's say this is the spot that we want it to be then i'm gonna create a, a cube scale it up here I'm just gonna delete these two vertices and scale this a little bit up like this it's it's quite messy what I'm doing here but I just I just need it to be filled okay that's that's like literally the only reason now I'm selecting this edge loop so this um, this edge here Control B and with scrolling up I'm just creating some extra like uh, edge loops in there and now I'm giving this a shade smooth 
And most of the time, I also give this a uh, few subdivisions. Mm, these corners get a little bit softer if you can see it, like that softness in your in your camera view, then you can keep it like that. Otherwise, you just add uh, some extra edge loops to kind of make it a more square. Very cool. And what you want to do is you want to give this a material. So new material, and we're going to do exactly the same thing as before. So texture coordinate, a, a mapping node, and a image texture. So this image texture goes into the roughness factor here, and then um, I'm going to do UV because it's very easily UV unwrapped, okay? And what we want to do now is just select the plastic gray that we already had. So plastic gray. And let's look at our result for right now. Probably won't look like a lot. Uh, base color I also put like all the way down, something like here. And we do have some results. This essentially is not like, you can't really see it good. A little bit on the side you can see what I want to do is I want to apply the scale Control a apply scale and then go into edit mode select everything you and unwrap so now we have UV unwrapped it and you can see that this gives us a way better result you can even play around with the scale so let's say you want it a bit bigger you can put anything anything to three um, it depends that's just up to you and if you look at it now, we have a very, very nice background. It's easy. It gives us nice reflection. That's all because of this roughness map. And um, this nice lighting that we have here is all because of the HDRI that we put around. And essentially, you can start rendering this. So the way that I like to render this is um, I'm going in here. In your output set, output properties. You have here an output TMT. I like to get a whole new folder. So if you click on plus, like uh, or plus, I mean on the folder, you can uh, make a whole new folder. So let's say we want uh, the metaballs. Create a new folder and just call this like animation or something like that. Animation. Go in here and click on accept. So now when you click on render animation, Every rendered, like um, every rendered PNG, because you're gonna render with PNG, every frame is gonna be one PNG, let's say, is gonna end up in that folder. And why do we do PNG? Because if you do a movie file and it gets corrupted, like let's say at a frame 100 or whatever, then the whole thing just, like you lost all your progress. But if, it, if you do it with pictures, like PNG, and it's crashed at frame 100, then you can just go from there. You can just start your like uh, render from 100 and then you go further. Um, to be honest, I think 250, by the way, is too, too much. So let's do 100 or whatever. And you only have to go here, render and render animation. That's it. I hope you guys learned a lot and click like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, make love to your significant water one and whatever. So have uh, have fun and I'll see you guys in the next one.